Lydia Pitchford. Uh, she is a Housing Authority Commissioner for timekeeping. And we thought that if, if there were any discrepancies on time, we better get the NAACP in here on, on it anyway. So Jimmy Jackson, the president of the NAACP, is also keeping time. It is an honor to welcome uh, our sitting mayor, the Honorable Mayor Osby Davis. And our city council woman, uh, Sister Joanne Shively, my good friend. I will read the rules and the regulations just as I did for the candidates forum. First of all, we ask that you turn off all cell phones and all the electronic devices. Uh, no candidates will have any electronic devices as they answer questions. Candidates will be given a one minute for opening statement. Candidates will then be asked the same series of questions uh, from me. Uh, then we will proceed alphabetically. If time permits, we may entertain more questions. Uh, each candidate has two minutes to respond to all questions. We will give each candidate a chance to uh, for, first answer their question and then if they would like to have a one minute response to once all, both candidates have answered the question in two minutes, we will give you a one minute rebuttal or response if you so deem. It's up to you if you choose to use that one minute. When you have 15 seconds left to speak, the timekeeper will hold up a yellow card and when you have approached uh, the two minute uh, time limit or the one minute, uh, you, the timekeeper will hold up a red card and you must immediately stop speaking. And once again, after both candidates have completed uh, a, a, an answer question, we will allow a one minute rebuttal or response from each candidate if you so desire. At the conclusion of all questioning for the evening, you will each be given a one minute time limit for closing statements and we will begin closing statements once again in alphabetical order. As I said to the city council candidates, you are amongst friends, you are amongst neighbors, supporters, and citizens. Take a deep breath. Uh, there are no trick questions here either. There are no gotcha questions. We want to know your platform. We want to know what's in your heart, in your head, and what your philosophy is for governing. And as we begin the opening statements, I want to remind you that you have one minute for your opening statement, and when you have reached 15 seconds left to speak, the timekeeper will hold up a yellow card, and when you have approached a one minute time frame, excuse me, a two minute time frame, uh, in the opening of one minute, uh, they will hold up a red card, and when you're doing two minutes, they'll hold up the red card. I'll, I'll let you know. So, I'll, I'll let you know. So we're doing one minute opening statements at this particular time, and we will begin with Mayor Osby Davis. Thank you, it's an honor and a privilege to be here this evening. I want to say to you that it's been an honor and a privilege also serving as your mayor for the past four years. Although I have to say it has not been without challenges, um, to say the least. And um, although it has been with challenges, we've been able to come out on top. I take issue with the people who said that we've done nothing over the last four years. Our council has made some tough decisions. We've moved through a financial crisis. We're financially stable. We're in the process of rebuilding, and the whole council came together and did what needed to be done to move our city forward. So again, I take issue with those who say we've done nothing. Um, I also will tell you that at the middle of all of that crisis, I have been the one in the leadership role. I have been the mayor. It has required me to reach across philosophical and social lines and beliefs and bring together a coalition that was in the best interest of the city, not in my interest. Excuse me. Thank you all for being here tonight. 
And thank you, Vallejo Faith Organization, for sponsoring this event. I'm sure it was no easy feat to find a location that was wheelchair accessible. I was born, raised, and educated in Vallejo, and I have lived here all my life because this is where I choose to live. I'm a retired bank executive and worked here most of my career. I've had the benefit that I've been able to use with my city work of being an expert in all forms of lending and a specialist in deposits and investments. I also have experience in management, administration, human relations, and customer relations, as well as being co-owner of a successful local business. Thank you for electing me to the City Council for three terms, even though I have been in the voting minority 95% of the time. Thank you. We will now begin the two-minute question round. We will begin with economic uh, questions. Uh, this Mayor Davis will begin with two minutes. On Thursday, the nation will be watching their televisions as President Obama is going to outline his jobs plan for the nation. What is your job plan for Vallejo? My job plan is to, be, to develop Mare Island. There are a lot of ways in which we can develop our city. Mare Island is a prime opportunity. My vision for Mare Island is a green tech island. It has jobs and technology that's all green from one end to the next. It will create not only jobs, it will create a tax base, and it will increase property value. It will also be the synergy that moves across the water to the waterfront. In addition to that, we have, we're working on a 360 vision, which is a partnership between the city of Vallejo and the county of Solano, and we're developing the fairgrounds. That has been moving on for the past year. Uh, in addition to that, we have a waterfront that there's a plan already approved, and you see right now that we've already built the transit station, we're working on the garage, and when all of that is complete, hopefully we'll be in a position to develop the waterfront. I vision a waterfront that looks like the waterfront when you take the ferry to San Francisco. When you get off the ferry, there's everything that you need right there. I'd like to see a time when uh, people who come here to our city, they come for a reason, and if they don't, if they just come to uh, use the transit system, that they come and they leave some of their money here, instead of just coming and then leaving, and coming and leaving. And if we were to develop that waterfront the way that it is in San Francisco, and we can and will do that, then we will have a tax base and create jobs. The Green Tech, by the way, on Mare Island will create thousands of jobs. I had the good fortune to be on the council in 1998 and was part of the council that brought Turo University to Vallejo. Vallejo, i.e. Mare Island, now has 85 businesses and 2,000 jobs quite a step forward from when it closed in 1996. We have also brought Alstom, Allied Defense Recycling, T&O Railroad, and Blue Homes, all to Mare Island. Additionally, I helped bring the Kaiser Call Center to Vallejo, 750 jobs, Lucky Store Plaza, Coles, and the Solano College campus. Where we are going to get our best concentration of jobs is Mare Island. The goal has always been 9,500 jobs. In 2002, after the first early transfer ever occurred in the nation, the city basically walked away from Lennar and said, okay, it's all up to you now. That was a major mistake. We need to accelerate development on Mare Island by working more closely with Menar as the city did prior to that date. Reestablish key relationships with state and federal decision makers and work with other government agencies. The Navy, BRAC, Base Realignment and Closure, Department of Defense, State Lands, Department of Toxic Substance Control, and a whole myriad of state and federal agencies have worked with the city to get Mare Island where it is. Whenever you have 
a situation where you're working with government entities, you must have another government entity leading. The city has not done that since 2002. We need to replace that. Thank you. And as we want to remind you, as each of you have completed one question, you also get a one minute response or rebuttal if you choose to. All right, I would like to. I agree that it's important to work with other agencies, um, federal government, state, and so on. And I have done that in my office. I haven't just talked about it, I've done it. I attended the hearings for Allied Defense Recycling to be located here. I spoke at the hearings. I contacted state representatives, federal representatives. I have a personal relationship with the director of MARAD. I've talked to him several times about ways in which to expand our facilities at Mare Island. I have reached out to uh, a number of different state and federal agencies to, to use the influence of the mayor's office for the benefit of the city. So I have done all of those things. I have pulled people together, and we do have relationships. I have relationships in the governor's office. I have relationships in, in uh, senator's office. I have relationships in assemblyman's office. I have relationships um, on the federal and state level in order to bring kinds of things that we need to our city, like the revenues, the grants, and those types of uh, resources. I have also worked with the various government entities that I just named, and I am the only council member who has been on the council since Mare Island closed and seen it through its transition. For approximately eight years, I also worked on the Mare Island Oversight Committee, where we engaged with entities, representatives from the various agencies that I mentioned. So um, it's more than just talk. Um, one other thing that I would like to add, since you're giving me a minute, is that we need to improve our schools if we want to bring jobs to Vallejo. Good schools produce well -educated, a well-educated labor force, which attracts business, reduces unemployment, and improves property values. And the first thing that we need to look at is trade schools. Not everybody wants to go to college. Thank you. We have heard a lot of mention of Mare Island generally tonight. Specifically, what is your plan for Mare Island, beginning with Council Member Scheidler? Thank you. I think I just sort of outlined that already. Um, to accelerate development by working more closely with Lenar as the city did prior to, uh, prior to 2002, and to hold them accountable. We haven't done that. And they told me that they want to be held accountable. We have had a variety of people, partners, etc., on the north end of Mare Island over the years. Lincoln Legacy Partners, Weston Harvest, they tied up the north end for years, not just months. Recently, we had a proposal from Mare Island Studios, and they were only given months. That doesn't seem quite right when you've given other entities years, and they did not perform. The north end of Mare Island is very difficult to build on. It's almost all accretion and fill. That means that to put up anything substantial, going to take pilings that have to be sunk to bedrock. That requires a large developer, somebody who's got $8 million to start with to demolish the old buildings on that end. We can have smaller businesses over there, but initially we have to have a large developer to take control of whatever happens on the north end. We have lost some very promising types of enterprises over there. Um, we lost the cancer center. Everyone was told that's because of a lack of financing. That's not correct. And if anyone would like to see it, I have the documentation to prove that. Mare Island has a potential port on the south end. There's deep water down there. It also has rail and freeway access perfectly aligned to become a shipping hub.
think I also indicated earlier when I spoke what my um, vision is for Mare Island. Uh, if you think about green tech, it's not just solar energy. It is everything green. And it's everything from research, development, manufacturing, assembly, showcase, you name it, you could find it there. I envision Mare Island being the green tech of North America so that everything that you need, green tech, you could find it there. And people will be coming from all over the country to do business here in Vallejo. If you wanted to use an analogy, you could use an analogy like um, Silicon Valley. San Jose became Silicon Valley. Well, this is a time for us. We have an excellent opportunity. We have an island that is well suited for green technology. And I have been working with uh, different people who have shown an interest but have not come up with anything uh, concrete yet to develop Mare Island into green tech. So th that's what I'm looking for. In addition to that, I have actively been promoting Mare Island um, since I've been in office. When Tesla Motors was looking for a place, I actually wrote a letter to Tesla Motors and made telephone calls trying to get them to look at Mare Island. They did not. Um, they said they had made up their mind about other places. I also sent a letter to Fisher Company when they were looking for a place to store their art and so on. Again, they were not interested. The point is that I've been making an effort and everybody and anybody that I could find who had um, a thriving business to look at Mare Island as an expansion place. And so that's what, we've been, that's what I've been doing in my office to try and build jobs on Mare Island as well as elsewhere in the city. And now that I have a little time left, I want to go back to something that was said earlier in terms of trade schools. I got 15 seconds. In terms of trade schools, I put together the City Unified School District and the trade unions to talk about how to create that since the City School District does not have money. And they've been talking about that. As a matter of fact, we had a survey at one of the sites. Thank you. You have a one minute response or rebuttal. Well, I'm glad that we're all uh, clued in on green tech on Mare Island because Apple Computer is very soon going to establish what they call their mothership, a huge campus in Cupertino. They have said, even before they break ground, that they expect to need more space. So I have recently sent a letter to the new CEO of Apple Computer, inviting him to look at Mare Island. Uh, hopefully they will be interested in coming this far north, but it doesn't get a whole lot greener than that. And that would be a multitude of clean jobs. We would not be leaving a carbon footprint with that type of an industry. So I am hoping to get an answer from Mr. Cook before too long. The next question is in regards to the 1% sales tax. Do you favor a 1% sales tax for Vallejo? Why or why not? Beginning with the mayor. Yes, I think if you look at the ballot, you'll see my name on there along with Vice Mayor Wilson uh, supporting and we wrote the argument in favor of. Look, let's, let's realize some things. Our city has a balanced budget. We lost $22 million in about 18 months. That's what put us in the position that we're in. Our city budget is now balanced for the next five years, but it has no money in that budget for increase in staff. It has no money for additional resources or services. Um, we are not talking about giving anybody any raises in that budget. It is a lean budget, and it has, um, in addition to that, it has um, labor concessions that we expect to get in order to make it even balanced. Now, if you understand that, and you know that we have a shortage of police officers, and people have been saying that public safety is important, if you know that our fire departments have been closed, we even have one engine company without water, uh, and if you also know that our streets are in bad repair, then you have to ask yourself how we're going to do that. We don't have a whole lot of money. We have no projected revenues beyond the 65 million. So the only way to do it is a 1% sales tax. And to me, that means we get it done now. We help ourselves move our city forward. We are in the rebuilding process. Let's take the opportunity to rebuild our city now. Shadow. Well, whether or not the budget is balanced will be determined by the economy. 
and it is only balanced if the economy remains static. Meanwhile, all economists are predicting that it will continue to decline and until at least the last quarter of 2013. They aren't saying what's going to go on beyond that only because their crystal balls are a little hazy. The sales tax that is being proposed is not one cent, it's one per cent. And I absolutely oppose this measure, but I voted to put it on the ballot so that you could all vote to decide if that's what you want to do. If it's approved, Vallejo will have higher sales taxes than American Canyon, Napa, and all of Solano County. This will put our businesses at a disadvantage and it will discourage new business. That was a quick two minutes. Thank you. No, she, that's her first, yeah, first two minutes. So one more minute, one Council more Member Shadow. Oh, okay. Also, this sales tax does not address the root of the problem, and that is unsustainable contracts. While the city was in bankruptcy, the council majority had the opportunity to reduce expenses and get sustainable contracts. They did not. In January of 2009, they approved a contract that gave raises to police and reduced our force to 90. In February 2009, they approved a contract that gave raises to middle management. In March 2010, they approved a fire contract that closed one station. I voted against all three of those contracts. Now the same people that did not get those sustainable contracts are supporting this 1% tax increase. If this is approved, the money will go into the general fund to be spent any way future councils wish. How can a council tell city employees we can't afford to give you raises if there's $9.8 million of new revenue? Thank you. You do have a one minute response. All right. Um, our budget is balanced based upon the facts and the figures that we have right now. Um, a higher sales tax. Yes, your sales tax may be higher than the neighboring counties, but no neighboring county or city is in bankruptcy or has come out of bankruptcy. No neighboring county or city has cut their police force by 47% and their uh, fire department by 44%. No neighboring city or county, no neighboring city or any other cities in this county have as bad of a street uh, repair record than we do. Now the 1% is only going to be 1% in order to um, repair all of those things. And in addition to that, we've been paying 1%, it ended, that was the state. But now we get to keep the money here, so it won't cost you any more than it cost you last year, the year before, the year before that. But you will pay more, but it is keeping the money here and helping ourselves. We're different from everybody else and we need to go about doing what we need to do for us. Well, we can improve public safety and restore city services and still live with, in our means without new sales taxes. One of the city council candidates gave you some statistics on that. But if our police and fire departments were staffed and paid the same as Vacaville, we could have more public safety employees and still save $5.8 million. That would fix a lot of streets. Increasing Vallejo's sales tax now is a really bad idea. It's time to make the tough choices. Reduce the expenses and quit kicking the can down the road. How can we ask you for more money when the city doesn't have its fiscal house in order? Let's, let's As we finish the first round of questions, the second round of questions includes uh, questions about the faith community. This is a, a faith community forum. And uh, we would like to know, do you have a vision as to how the city and the faith community can collaborate on issues that confront the community? And we begin with uh, Mayor Davis, is that correct? 
I was first last week. You were first last, so we'll begin okay. with that's council okay. that's member okay. Shadowley. I'll go first. No, is her, we'll let her go. Ladies first. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> We're wasting a lot of time, so let me just go ahead. Um, it's important that um, all the various organizations in our community work with the city to make it a better place. And the faith community is a part of that. I expect that nonprofit organizations, including the faith community, would get involved in helping us to deal with our schools, to deal with uh, police in our community in terms of safety, to deal with fire, to deal with all the things that they can participate in. I'm talking about helping to form the neighborhood watch groups along with the fighting back organizations and so on. There's something for all of us to do. Um, what is really encouraging to me in the city as I have been mayor over the last four years is encouraging to find all of the different groups in this community who are willing to roll up their sleeves and do what needs to be done to make our city a better place. And that has happened across the community without exception. And that's the kind of thing that we have to have. We are a community. Together we stand, divided we fall. We will sink or swim together. And so as far as I'm concerned, everybody has a role and we all need to step up to the plate. That's true. We are all in this together, just as we have been since the United States was created. All of those people that went out and fought for your right to vote and your right to do what you want worked together. Somehow we've gotten away from that idea. One of the, the most wonderful comments I've ever heard, and I think we would almost all agree, is from John F. Kennedy. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And that's what we need to be saying right here now in Vallejo. It's wonderful if the faith community pitches in along with everyone else who needs to pitch in. Yes, we have neighborhood watch groups that we've never had before in approximately two years. That's gone from 20 of them to over 200 because our citizens realize that we must work together. If we don't, we're all going to go down together. Thank you. Would you like to respond? Well, not a response, but I think uh, since I have a minute, I might as well add something to it. <laughs> yes. Um, um, what, what concerns me is, is that we have gotten into, since we've been in a crisis, we have gotten into the point to where we are talking about us and them. And there is no us and them. It's all of us together. What I hope is the crisis that we've been through, the things that, the difficulties that we've had to overcome has brought us closer together as a community as opposed to splitting us apart. I have to say this, I believe that the crisis on the council has brought us closer together instead of splitting us farther apart, even though it may have taken some time to do. But that, this is a time when we need to pull together and work together, irrespective of what your views are on any other subject. Your motive has to be about making the city a better place, not about yourself. Would you like a one minute response or rebuttal? I think there was a question earlier to the council candidates, or at least there was a response about the split vote that frequently appears on the council. Yeah, there have been a lot of five twos and four threes, but that's why you elect seven different people. And they aren't all going to sit up there in concert. And would you want that? Is that healthy? I don't think so. So we aren't always going to agree. Sometimes you'll agree with what gets passed, sometimes you won't. The important thing is that we don't take it personally. That means everyone. And that we continue to work together. That if we don't get our way one time, that we don't say, I'm taking my bat and ball and I'm going home. No, so you come back the next week and you work maybe a little bit harder. And some of us have made mistakes, probably all of us. Anybody out there that has a pencil that has 
an eraser on it that looks like it did the day you bought it? Mine don't. Thank you. The next round of questions is on government relations and Council Member Shively, we will begin with you. What do you consider the three most important priorities for a mayor? Well, two of the priorities that you absolutely have to have if you go into the political arena are patience and persistence. Because nothing gets done in a hurry in government. I think you need leadership. Probably one of the, the most important qualities. And I would just like to share with you that recently I had the opportunity to demonstrate think outside the box leadership. After we had gotten through three contracts with city employees, there was still one left to go, and that was with IBEW. That's all the non-sworn, non-administrative, non-management people that work for the city. Largest single group. At the time that we got to that contract, Measure A had been passed. Binding arbitration was no longer a part of the equation. When that contract came to the council with our negotiators, everyone sitting down in front of us, the council could have said, and I could have said, okay, we're going to impose these terms and conditions on you. Instead, I said, no, I'm not going to do that just because I can. So here's what I propose. You know we need $3.6 million for your group to save. So I'm asking you to go find that $3.6 million. That had never been done in Vallejo before. So we gave them two months, said, if you can't do it in two months when you come back, you will know what you're facing. But you're not going to wake up tomorrow morning with your paycheck being 5 or 10% less than it was when you went to bed. And they did it. Thank you, IBEW. I agree that the mayor has to have leadership, but I think leadership encompasses a number of things, and there's certain personality or characteristic traits. One, I think you have to be selfless. You have to recognize that it's not about you, and it doesn't matter whether you get your way or not. It's about the people that you represent and the people that you serve. You have to have passion for the, peop for the job that you have. You have to have passion for the city. It allows you and it compels you to do things that you would not ordinarily do, and also, it makes you self-sacrifice. Uh, you also have to have compassion for the people in the community, recognizing that everybody wants a piece of you. Um, everybody wants the mayor to come to every one of their events or to be the person uh, uh, to uh, speak at whatever events. And you have to recognize that you're servant of the people. You're not there to say, I don't feel like it, I'm tired, I've, I've done too much. If you take office, then you've got to do it. Um, and I think that you lead by um, bringing about coalitions of people, bringing people together to get something done. The best decision is the decision that's made when you have the most input on what that solution ought to be. If you only have two people and they both think just alike, one of them is unnecessary. So you really need everybody. And what I've done in my office is, since I've been mayor, I've invited the input of everybody on that council to tell me what it is that you think we need to do to move forward. As I said, it's taken us some time to get there, but we're there and we've been working together and moving in a common direction. That's what you need in the mirror. To, someone who's able not only to have ideas, but to bring them to fruition with people that you work with and to get it done. And, and let me tell you something, a council majority is the council, okay, because this is a democracy. So you can't say that the council majority did something. It's all a part of us. That's it. We're a democracy. The majority wins. Would you like a one minute response? Well, I think all of us who have been elected to office have found out just how much demand is placed on your time. 
And um, it's bad enough when you're going through a campaign, but then it continues and it intensifies. And if you don't know that going in, you're in for a huge shock. And I've been doing that for 12 years. So I, I do know what it is about. When it comes to listening to the community, I have, and I will continue to listen. I have sponsored more town halls and created more citizens advisory committees than any other elected official. That is listening to the public. That is hearing what they're telling you. And more than that, it's doing it afterwards. It's not enough to just have this nice little flip chart, put everything on it, everybody gets the minutes, and then it dies. Um, I want to go back to something else that was asked since I have a minute. It was mentioned earlier about $3.6 million with IBW in order to um, resolve the dispute that we had. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that the council had determined what amount of take backs we needed from the union in order to move forward. It was no magical number. It was a number that was derived by our financial people. And we had come up with $3.6 million in a different way. And what the council did is the council allowed them to go back and come up with an alternate way than what the council was initially proposing for the $3.6 million. So it was an activity that was engaged in by the entire council. Now I have to admit that I did not vote yes for them to go back and do that. I thought what we did from the very beginning was sufficient. But it did occur and the council itself moved forward in, in resolving that issue with our employees. The next round of questions, thank you, is going to be on quality of life uh, issues. Uh, Vallejo has been in the paper recently as joining Richmond and Oakland uh, in its crime uh, increasing in the city. How would you work with the police and other agencies to combat crime in the city? Begin with Mayor Davis. Well, I, I've been promoting uh, community involvement in our efforts to combat crime. I happen to believe that you can have all the policemen in the world, it doesn't stop crime. I think you also need people in the community that are helping to be the eyes and the ears of the police in order to report things. What happens if a policeman catches a person and no one tells what they saw, then of course you don't get any convictions. And so nothing happens. So I think it's all of our responsibility to help out. We become the eyes and the ears. So I would continue to promote um, uh, fighting back. I have raised money and given to fighting back to promote their involvement in our communities. I also have worked with uh, Kaiser Permanente in getting a grant that has allowed us to hire three new police officers and that's creating a um, crime suppression unit to deal with the quality of life crimes like prostitution and drugs and those types of, of things. In addition to that, um, I have worked with other council members and staff, well actually with one council member, we established a, a, a prostitution task force to deal with the issue of prostitution in our community. The point is, is that I have been active in trying to deal with the issues that face our community that affect us in terms of uh, public safety. And I will continue to do that and continue to look for ways in which we can work smarter and better in addition to I've been pushing cameras throughout our city so that the police can work smarter and better. Uh, the the uh, manager finally came back with that proposal to the council and the council approved it. And so we will have crime cameras around the city. Thank you. Thank you. I think our citizens have demonstrated a willingness to step up to that by engaging in more neighborhood watch groups probably than Vallejo has ever, ever had. And they are extremely effective. If we had one police officer for every citizen in Vallejo, it still wouldn't be enough because they can't all be in the right place at the right time. So we need volunteers from the community to help with what the city doesn't have the money to pay for in the way of services. You see that at Kaiser and at Sutter. If it weren't for volunteers, those two hospitals couldn't exist. 
city needs to tap that pool. And I know there have been a lot of people in the past who have wanted to be involved with that. One of the big things that we need to do in that area is totally reorganize and restructure city government. Something that I have been advocating for since before we went into bankruptcy. Part of that would be reorganizing the police department. Now, I'm no expert on how that should be done, but I have talked to other people who are, and it can be done. It is being done in other cities, not that far away from us. What we need is someone who has the desire to make those changes within our police department. The city council can't do that. All we can do is direct the city manager and tell him what we would like to see. There are ways of doing everything better than we do it now. There is nothing in this world that can't be done better. There's always room for improvement. I think I'll stop there. Thank you. I agree that there's always room for improvement and we cannot rest on our laurels at any time. But let me just also tell you that in terms of restructuring our city, the council gave direction to our city manager, our interim city manager, to come up with some recommendations about ways in which to restructure our city and to make um, life a lot simpler and easier and more cost effective. He presented 297 recommendations to our council, which our council approved unanimously. So we're already about restructuring our city and doing the things we need to do. In addition to that, with respect to reorganizing the police department, I would just ask uh, Council Member Shively what that is, because I haven't been a police officer ever. I don't know how to restructure a police department. And if I'm going to talk about doing it, I want a plan for how it's going to be done. I am going to rely on the police chief and I'm going to rely on the city manager to get that done. Uh, the cost in a police department is manpower. And I don't know how you reduce the cost of manpower by moving around someplace else. Well, as I said, I'm no expert at reorganizing the police department either, but I know people who are retired police officers. If you want to know how something should work, ask the person who uses it. That's usually the best way to get the answers. And we have plenty of retired police officers around Vallejo who I think would have really good input, just as we have other retired city employees that I have spoken with over the years who have wonderful ideas about how to change the department that they worked in, even the office area that they worked in. You can pay for all the consultants in the world to do that, but you're going to get the best information from the people who actually are doing the job. And when it comes to restructuring, we, the city, paid, and I haven't found out how much yet, a company called Management Partners to come up with a restructuring plan last year that the council has never seen. Thank you. Here's a question that I'm quite sure everyone in the room would want to know, and that is, what is your plan to improve the roads and streets in our city? Beginning with you, Council Member Shad. As I mentioned earlier, there is an opportunity when contracts come up in June of next year to have significant savings. Something as simple as staffing our public safety personnel the same way Vacaville does. Immediate $5.8 million savings. $5.8 million that can go into the streets, can go to the senior center, can go to youth organizations. We won't have to have golf tournaments to raise money. We, the city, will be able to fund those projects. But the key is reducing our expenses in one area so we will have money to use it in other areas. Right now, depends on who you talk to, it's anywhere from 73 to 94 percent of our general fund 
that is being used for employee costs. That doesn't leave much for anything else. Streets, community-based organizations, we don't have anything to pay anybody with except employees. And within two to three years, 50% of the city of Haleo's payroll costs will be going to pay retired employees. Could any of you run a business if 50% of your payroll cost went to people who don't even show up for work anymore? In terms of our streets, um, as I said earlier, our budget right now is balanced and is projected to be balanced for the next five years. Again, I will say to you that we've already, in balancing the budget for the next three to four years, have already projected labor concessions of more than three or four million dollars just to keep it balanced going forward. So even if you did something to generate $5 million next year, we've already done that. That's how we balanced our budget. If we don't get the labor concessions that we projected, we will be in trouble next year, which means that the councils are going to have to make some more tough decisions about making sure that we get those labor um, givebacks that we need in order to keep our budget balanced. So that is not going to enable us to repair our streets. If we're going to repair our streets, we're going to need some money from a different source. Again, I'm going to talk about Measure B because in my opinion, that's how we do it. It's going to talk about how the monies can be spent. It's going to be up to the future council to make that decision. Now, I recognize that that doesn't mean that the money gets, goes the way that everybody wants it to go. But at this point in time, I think that you have a council that's committed to making sure that that budget that we have already passed stays the way it is and that we're not going to spend the money foolishly. If we're going to fix our streets, if we're going to hire more police officers, if we're going to reopen fire stations, I'm still pushing the 1% sales tax because that infuses the capital for us to do it. If, if there is another way that I'm open, someone please tell me where the money is going to come from. And even if you get $5.4 million next year, what happens the year after and the year after and the year after? How do you continue to fix your streets? You're not going to do it with a one-time give back from a union. You're just not going to do it. So we have to have some other way. Tell me what the plan is if it's not the sales tax. Thank you. We have a one minute response, so we'll It's only a balanced budget if the economy remains static. And that's not going to happen. At least no one that I have talked to thinks it is. The one-time give back is not a one-time give back from the unions. A reduction in total compensation costs will be carried forward from year to year to year. It's not going to happen one year and then go away. Keep in mind, this is a general sales tax. Future city councils will be able to spend that revenue, if it passes, any way they choose no restrictions in cons excuse me in bankruptcy the council majority approved employee contracts that guaranteed raises and free health care considering that track record can we trust that increased taxes will be spent on improving services or on employee benefits My question is still the same thing. So how do we rehire police officers? How do we open fire stations? How do we fix our roads? How do we put money into economic development? Even if you do have it, and you're, you're absolutely right, it does go forward each year. It was my mistake. It does go forward each year in terms of whatever the savings is, but how is that enough to take care of the problems that we have in our city? How does that, it, it costs roughly $200,000 per police officer. Uh, each time you open a, a fire station, it costs roughly $3.6 million. How do you do that? How do you add back and move forward with 
a, a um, reduction in salaries. Um, the, the answer that I have is very simple. I already gave it to you. It's the 1% sales tax in order to be able to move ourselves forward and also use money for economic development to establish the economic base we need so we don't need the sales tax. And when the 10 years pass, it goes away and we have ourselves financially set that we can continue to move. Thank you. I believe we have time for one more question and then we'll have some nations. The next question is on education. And what would you suggest to improve the educational experience for youth in Vallejo? Um, it starts with me. I forgot. I think, I think, I think it <laughs> Who does it start with? Does it start? The bear. Did you do the last one first? I don't, I, I don't remember. It, it starts, starts with the bear. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I have worked with three different superintendents over the last four years and meeting with them on a regular basis to see how my office can assist them in accomplishing their goals. I came up with a plan that I thought would work to help our schools. And then I was told by the superintendent and other people, that's not the direction I'm going. And then I realized that it is not my job to come up with a plan for the schools. It's my job to do what I can to support those whose job it is, is to move the school district forward. So I, again, pledge my support to the superintendent of schools and those teachers and other administrators who have a plan for moving our school forward. I think it's important that I be on board with them and supporting them in any way that I can. In the meantime, what I've also done is that I've always believed in mentoring kids. I have two foster kids. Um, I've raised a number of children that weren't my own because I believe in young people. So I go to schools on a regular basis and I speak to young people and I encourage them to be all that they can be and I tell them about my life story so they will understand you don't have to come from a uh, silver spoon in order to make it you just have to have the will to do it so I think it's important that we continue to mentor our students uh, in addition I'm working right now with Comcast and the superintendent on a program that would allow students to have a laptop in their classrooms um, for $150. Now I recognize that all of them won't have $150, so I'm also working on a plan right now for people to sponsor some of those students who won't have the money. In addition, Comcast has agreed to allow for them to have internet services for $10 a month. Those are the kind of things I'm working on to make it better for the students in school so they have the resources to compete with everybody else, because without computers and technology, they are just whistling in the wind because we're moving too fast. So. In summary, I believe the, the mayor's role is to use the office to assist the school district in whatever ways they can. Well, before I answer that one about schools, I want to respond to how do we get the money to buy cops. Let me just uh, show you that the average police personnel pay in Vallejo, this is everyone, it's averaged out over uh, sworn and non-sworn, is $220,000 a year. In Vacaville, it's $140,000 a year. There is $60,000 saved every year for each employee. That, I think, will give us enough money to do many of the things that we need to do without a new sales tax. On the schools, the Vallejo's recovery is highly dependent on the school's recovery. Other cities that have not suffered as much during the recession have good schools. They produce a well-educated labor force that attracts businesses, keeps property values up. We, the city, needs to work with the school district without usurping or supplanting the school board. We have an entity called the Interagency Committee that has not been well utilized. In fact, until recently, it had hardly met at all during the last four years. What I have advocated for a number of years is partnering with the school district Greater Vallejo Recreation District, Sanitation and Flood Control, and the library to eliminate waste and duplication. 
Let me just give you a really simple example. If there are three properties owned by any of those three entities that are right next to each other, does it really make sense to send out three pickup trucks with three lawnmowers with three people to operate that lawnmower when we could be doing it with one? Yes, um, the interagency committee, um, Council Member Shively is right. It has not, um, in the first couple of years that I was in office, we didn't operate that much. We have, in the last two years, been in full operation, and it's a coalition between Greater Vale Recreation District, Vallejo Unified School District, the City of Vallejo, Vallejo Sanitation Flood Control District, the Library Board, and the College Board. And we are, in fact, moving and doing things that are on a collaborative basis, and collaboration is the key to us doing things differently in our city. Um, we are looking at providing IT services and, and joining together and doing our maintenance on our facilities and our vehicles and vehicle purchase and HR and a number of things like that. So we, have, we are active now in finding ways to uh, reduce the cost of government and more effectively provide services to all the people uh, in the city. I've not only advocated doing that, I have done it. I was a part of Soul Trans, combination of Solano, I mean Vallejo Transit and Benicia Transit to form one agency, save $1.5 million immediately. Thank you. Would you like a response? Okay. Thank you. We have ended our questioning for the evening and we have come to a time of summation and we are going to give each candidate a one minute summation in alphabetical order, beginning with uh, Mayor Osby Davis. I'm going to read it so that I make sure I get done in one minute. We live in a drastically challenging time. We have less and we are asked to do more with what we have or at least maintain what we've had before. And the only way we're going to do that is by um, bringing the public and private agencies together and forming collaborations and partnership. Without that, we cannot do it. Uh, we must build coalitions with different agencies and bodies. I have worked my last uh, four years in building coalitions and bringing people together and using my office to make things happen for the citizens of Vallejo, including going to Sacramento and, and lobbying with uh, legislators, as well as going to um, Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C., and lobbying. I've worked hard to coordinate the transit services. I worked hard to bring about coalitions, collaborations, and consolidations. Uh, you, in my opinion, you need a mayor who is going to be able to bring people together and move us forward, not divide us. Council Member Shadow. Thank you. Um, my opponent has referred to pulling himself up by his bootstraps and going to um, law school. And he has every right to feel very proud of that. Anyone should be proud of a, that kind of an accomplishment. So in law school, they teach you how to talk real good. And he may be a better speaker than I am, but I ask that you listen to the content of what we both said and not just how well it was delivered. As your mayor, I will focus on restructuring city government, developing a plan for long-term financial stability, partnering with other agencies to eliminate duplication and waste, making government more transparent and business customer friendly, fixing our streets, improving Vallejo's image, and promoting inclusiveness. We do not need divisiveness. I will use every opportunity to promote Vallejo's image and unify our city, as I have in the past. And I will represent everyone equally, without bias or prejudice. My special interest group is the citizens of Vallejo, all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just seen democracy in action. Let's thank our candidates, Mayor Oski Davis and Council Member John Shadow. Let's welcome our leader and founder, Pastor Danny Jefferson. 
thank you all so much for coming on tonight. I'm going to ask that you stand right where you are, and we're going to go home. Uh, again, I want to thank the candidates, uh, both the mayoral as well as city council candidates who came and gave us their vision for Vallejo. I think you've got some good ideas of uh, the visions of each person. We want to make sure that you uh, vote on November the 8th. Please, uh, if you're not registered to vote, we can assist you with that. Uh, and let's go ahead and make this city the best city it can be. Before we leave, I'm going to ask that Pastor Cliff Lawson, the pastor of Wills of Blessings, give us our benedictory prayer. For the leaders, uh, we want to just stay five minutes for evaluation of Vallejo Faith Organization. Pastor Cliff Lawson. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what we have heard tonight. Thank you for the openness of all the candidates. And Father, you have really caused this to help us to know who to choose. Father, I pray for all the candidates and all those that serve on offices in our city. I pray that you would strengthen each one of them, that you would assist each one of them as they go through this campaign. And Father, we ask that you would bless them. And we pray your blessing upon this great city, the city that we believe you have caused to be here. And we pray your blessing upon the inhabitants of this city. Lord, that they would be blessed when they go out and they would be blessed when they come in. And that you would bless all the work of their hands. And now, Father, as we approach the election in November, we pray that you would help us to remember what we have heard tonight. And what we are hearing through the other forums and all the speeches that are being done. And help us, Lord, to make the right choices as we believe them to be. And Father... Now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon us all. In Jesus' name, amen.